see how with that green wood right there in the bottom of that groove is it's really hard to kind of cut your way back up out of there which is hard to do anyway but if the wood's dry you can actually kind of make it past the bottom and come back up but when the wood's this wet it's just too fibrous and too soft it just pushes away from that knife blade so you just kind of got to do what you can right now it's getting there just kind of start with a tree and make something you can use you know And you're always kind of, you know, working for the aesthetic of it, but get things to look the way you want them to, hollowed out the way you want them hollowed out. They really have kind of a pretty cup than an ugly cup, I guess. <laughs> One approach doesn't quite give me the, the cut I want, I'll just change my approach and kind of get something working there until I get a kind of get the cut going that I want going. Yeah, there's what I was looking for right there. So I'll be able to where I can't do that with my knife, with my straight knife, with this guy, I can kind of cheat that in there and I can kind of work across that joint a little bit. Tip right up there on the end where my radius is small. It's getting pretty close. You can kind of scrape that even though it's green and get it to kind of play ball with you the way you want it to be.
can kind of go up here and start looking at edges. Start getting things where we want them. Got our handle pretty decent. Kind of break the edges. Make it comfortable? Yeah, just making it comfortable, yeah. Right now, it's it's kind of weird feeling because the the wood's almost soft to my touch because it's so wet and things, and I know it's going to become dry and hard and brash once it gets dried out and ready to go. Now, is that handle kind of weak because you're getting into that? Kind of end grain there? Is it uh, you can't put enough leverage on it to break it out that far. You know, you, there, you don't have any leverage there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's right through there. I mean, that very tip you could possibly break off, but you got straight grain, you know, down to that level probably on it. So you're only that rim would really be at risk. And it, there's no leverage there. So you're fighting off a grizzly bear with it or something maybe, but hopefully it won't come to that. If you're down to your belt cups, your primary weapon, you might want to consider retreat at that point. I don't know. Like I said, I leave this front end out here a little heavier because cup gets dropped, scraping in pans and things. That's the part of it that's going to see the most abuse over time. So leaving a little bit of extra wood out there, I don't see as a big deal. I mean, you know, you're talking a fraction of an ounce. It's not like it's going to kill the guy who's carrying it. Sharp tools, man. And try not to cut your pants. I got a few holes in mine already. So how thin do you try to get things? Um, I figure these guys are going to see some abuse. I mean, they're going to get thrown in bags, you know, dangle from your belt, get set on probably, dropped. Um, you know, they're going through multiple wet, dry cycles. And so I'm not interested in getting this down to, you know, paper thin. Some guys, well, you know, my cups, a, I've seen guys work burl ones down to where they're translucent, literally. I wouldn't want to rely on that in the wilderness because I think it's too fragile. This cup here, it's probably about a quarter out here, and it's probably about three sixteenths in through the main body, and then the handle's heavier, obviously. But it's got a nice little oh, kind yeah, of like the profile shape. there, you know, and things. And I'm happy with it. It's come out nice. And and you could, you know, you can wait till it's dry and scrape on a little if you wanted to, but I don't know. It'll work the way it is. Mm -hmm. 
edge there I just don't like. That's how you make a cup.